Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to Lily's Design. Today, I'll show you how to make this LOL dollhouse I made for my granddaughters for Easter. This dollhouse is portable so they can take it on the go and it's great to store their LOL dolls. It's about eight and a half inches high, 10 inches wide, and six and a half inches deep. The dollhouse opens for easy access and when they unlatch it, they will see a sparkly yellow brick road and on a hot summer day, they could jump in the pool. I will show you how to make the couch and bed in another video, which you can find down below or you'll find it at the end of this video. I will take you through the steps of making this dollhouse as well as show you how I sewed it. And if you don't have a sewing machine, I believe you can easily hand sew it, hot glue it, or use fabric glue instead. You will want to print my free pattern down below in the description. When you print my pattern, you are agreeing to using this for personal use only, not commercial. Let's start with putting pattern number four and eight together. Place 4B on top of 4A, line up the sides, the bottom and top, tape it, place 4B on top of 4C, line up the sides, the bottom and top, tape it. Slide 4D under 4B. Line up. And tape. Everything should be lined up. I also included a sample page that will show you how the lines should match up. Grab 8A and B, place A on top of B, line up the bottom, top, and the sides, tape it, that's it. Before you cut your material, I wanna go over my pattern. To save you from printing and cutting a bunch of patterns, I combine them into one. To cut the fabric and fleece, you want to cut the outer part of the pattern. It's the one with the dashes. To cut the plastic canvas, I'll use the solid line. It's the inner square one. What I do is I place the plastic on top of the pattern. I line up my two edges with the inner square line. And then I'll mark where I'm going to cut. I'll mark my corner. And I mark my end. Now I'll know where I could start. And because this is a grid, I don't have to trace it all out. As you can see, this is a straight line here that I could follow along. And I could turn here or I go to this end. I purchased my plastic canvas at Walmart for $3.47. It's a 12 by 18 inch ultra stiff and it comes with three sheets. You want to finish cutting your plastic, then cut your fleece. I am using a heat and stay fleece. The only reason I'm using this, it's the only thing I had on hand, but you can use regular fleece that will work just as well. Then you want to cut your fabric. We'll cut the outside walls. And I'm using a sparkly pink fabric for the inside walls. And the flooring is like a checker. I got all three of those materials at Joanne's Fabric. The roof, I got at Walmart the sequin material and the grass I purchased this material at Walmart. Next, we will cut and iron on the windows and doors, just like I did here on number three. 
I cut my heat transfer with the Cricut machine. You can use any die cut machine. And if you don't have a die cut machine, you can cut your heat transfer vinyl with a scissor or an X-Acto knife. If you don't want to use a heat transfer vinyl, you can use fusible webbing on fabric instead, as shown on this house. No matter which option you choose to place your windows and doors on, I included the free cutout in SVG, PNG, and PDF format. You will find it in the file down below in the description. For the windows, I wanted to match the pink glitter on this LOL flyer, but I had a hard time finding a pink glitter that was in a heat transfer that would come close to that pink. Either it was too purple or it was too peachy. Then I decided to try this idea I had. I ironed on a light pink, then ironed on a pink transparent on top of it. And I can't believe it. It's a perfect match. If you would like to use the same colors as I did here on the sample, I will list a link down below in the description where you can purchase these two heat transfers as well as all the heat transfers I show in this video. The white sparkle was used on the steps and the silver was used for the doorknobs. If you do not have these at home, I would suggest using white instead. If you will be using Cricut Design Space, I am sharing my project. You will find that link down below. After you load my project into your design space, you will notice I grouped and attached the two window pane and the two light pink windows. Now all you have to do is click make, choose mirror image, place your heat transfer, shiny side down, and cut. All right, let's lay out the windows. You can either eyeball it and lay it on the fabric or follow along what I do to get a more accurate placement of the doors and windows. On my pattern, my windows are lined up where they should be placed on the fabric. I measured from the top of the pattern where the window pane should start, which is two and a half inches. Next, I measured the side, which is one and seven sixteenths. I'll lay my ruler on the side of the fabric and I'll move the ruler till the two and a half mark lines up with the horizontal grid line. I will pull down on the fabric slowly, keeping it even till it lines up with the zero on the ruler. Now I'll grab my other ruler, I'll lay it horizontal and move it till the 1 and 7 16th line up with the vertical grid line. Then I'll pull on the fabric this way till my edges line up with the zero on the ruler. I'll take the two rulers, line them up horizontal and vertical using the measurements to find the grid lines where I will place the window panes. Once I find it, I'll move the ruler to the side so I can place the windows down. And once you got these windows on, everything else lines up. And I did cut these two out together as well. I just purchased this quilter cut and press because I needed something to put on the table to demo my ironing. It turned out more useful than I thought. You can line up things on the board, then iron it without having to move it, like you just seen in my video. Works great when you want to center a design on a t-shirt. Just place it between the shirt layers. The other side is for cutting material. If you do heat transfer vital, you should really check this out. I'll list it down below in the description, as well as all the items I use in this video. This way you could easily find them. For number six, 
the window and drapes, I found an easy way to lay down the heat transfer. Place your fabric on top of the pattern, and if you can see through it, you can do this next step. If you can't see through the fabric, then you want to do the same step as I just did on the windows on number four and measure it. I will lay the black heat transfer down first and I did cut these out together. Now you could either place your plastic back on top, this way we don't press over the rods, or you could use parchment paper, which I'm going to use the parchment paper. All right, now we're going to lay down our drapes and we're going to lay the top of the drape, that little corner right there. We're going to go right between the finial and the rod. We'll start it right after that finial. If you're going to use a desk, lay the fabric on top of the pattern and place the screen down first. For number three, the doors and the window, I place my fabric on top of the pattern and I can see a little bit where the door is, so I will lay my black glitter heat transfer on top. I'm having a hard time seeing the window. It will be best to measure where I place the heat transfer down. The measurements are from the top of the pattern to the start of the window pane is one and one eighth of an inch. The side edge of the pattern to the side window pane is two inches. Another trick to laying the heat transfer down that I found works great is use a light box. If you use this method, it's best to use a heat transfer that sticks really good to the fabric. So this way, when you move it to iron it, it won't move out of place. I got a great deal on this light box on Amazon for $16, and when you're weeding fine details, this light comes in handy. I'll list a link down below in the description. For pattern number eight, I will show you a few options that you can choose from to make your pathway. The first one is the brick road. You will need a die cut machine. The second is a solid pathway using heat transfer. You can cut this with a die cut machine or scissors. The third one is a solid pathway using fusible webbing on fabric and iron it on. Whichever option you choose, you will lay them all out the same way. Let me show you how. You want to make sure your fabric is laying in the correct position. If it's this way, it's wrong. This is correct. Grab your pathway, place it on top of the pattern, making sure it's in the correct direction. This is where the pool will go. You can move this pathway a little to the left or right, but be careful not to place it in the pool area or after the red lines I marked here. We need a quarter inch seam allowance on all four sides. Now we're going to do our handle, place your fleece down, then place your fabric, right side should be facing up, fold it over, and pin it. 
Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch from the edge. Now that you have that sewn, we'll go ahead and turn it inside out. Let's get it all straightened out. And we're going to have the seam in the center. All right, take it to the ironing board and use some steam. And we'll cut these ends. Even them up. Do the same process for the other handle. Let's attach the handle to the roof. I'm using a sequin fabric I purchased at Walmart. And being it's see-through, I will need to use a solid fabric underneath. So I will cut two of the sequin see-through fabrics and two solid fabrics for the roof. If your fabric is not see-through, you will follow the pattern direction and only cut two fabrics. You want to lay down your fleece, then the fabric. And you can place the pattern on the side here. And I marked where your handle should go. Or if you like, you could use a ruler and it's two and a half inches where you will start the handle and two and a half inches on this side. You want to place your seams facing up, pin it, next fold it this way, and then fold under. Your seams should be facing up. And here's a close up so that you can see the seams are facing up. You want to make sure you line these up exactly. Pin it. After you finish pinning the one roof, go ahead and pin the other side. We will flip it around and line it up and make sure that these two ends are matching up. If they're not, you want to go ahead and redo it. Now we're going to add our elastic and I'm using a hair tie that I got at Walmart. And you want to make sure that your loop is going in this direction. Let me show you with a different color. You want to make sure the loop is going towards the handle. Okay, take it to the sewing machine and sew an eighth of an inch. And you can stop a little bit after the handle, or if you like, you can sew straight down. We won't be adding elastic on this side. We will add a button at the very end. After you sew the handle and elastic on, cut the end of the elastic off. Grab the ceiling and the fleece. With the right sides together, place it on top of the roof. Pin it, and then we're going to sew a quarter inch from all three sides. We'll end right there. We're going to leave this end open. This is where we'll slide in our plastic. This is the opposite of the elastic. After you trim your plastic, it should look like that inside. You want to make sure you push it all the way to the top and the plastic is hitting here. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a base stitch straight across. I base stitch right under the plastic and it doesn't matter if it's crooked or not because these stitches are going to come out. Grab number four, your outside wall, and we're going to grab number six, our back inside wall. And they're facing this way, 
just flip it over. It'll be just like that. Pin it. And when you're pinning this, make sure your fleece is behind number six and it's behind number four. Let's take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch from the edge, stopping right there. Do the same thing for the other side, a quarter inch from the edge and stop right when you get to this line here. After you sew the sides, we are gonna attach number five. I'm going to attach the desk on this side and you can see which side you want by flipping it just like that and seeing where you want it. I'm going to place mine on the left hand side and I attach the fleece to the back of it and I'm going to put the plane number five on the right side. pin it and we're going to sew a quarter inch from the edge and we're going to start our sewing about a half an inch from this end. So go up, around the roof, down and down and we're going to stop about half an inch before we get to the end. We're going to repeat the same process on this side start about a half an inch and then we're going to sew a quarter inch from the edge all the way around and stop right there. After you sew on the number fives on each side you're going to take your roof is going to be facing down your handles facing this way and you're going to slide it in between number six and number four. And push it all the way up to the top and line it up. Pin it. So a quarter inch from the edge, straight across. Turn it inside out, push out all the corners. You could use the end of an old paintbrush. Iron it. Be sure to cover your heat transfer with either parchment paper or the sticker it came with. And also make sure you are covering the back of the windows. Grab number three, your front, and your roof. You want your handle up here and just flip this over, line it up, pin it, and we'll sew a quarter inch from the edge straight down. Press this seam open. You'll notice I have two pins here and that is because I will be placing the rubber bands there. What you will do is measure from the bottom up and I'm going to place mine about three and a quarter inch. You can go as high as four and three fourths of an inch. And you want to make sure the loop is facing in in that direction. Move that over and let's grab number eight, the yard. And go ahead and pin your fleece to the back. <clears throat> and the way I have this set up, the pool is going to be right here. So you want to set yours up to be just like it. And then we'll go into flip it 
on top of number three. So, pool is here, and this is here. This is when you walk in. Place it on top, pin it, and you want to make sure that your rubber bands are attached here. And we're going to sew a quarter inch from the edge on all three sides. We will leave the bottom open. This is opposite of the handle. Turn it inside out. And I want to go over one thing is when you're sewing this down, make sure you go over this elastic a couple of times. As you know, the kids will be pulling on this constantly. So you really want to lock this in. So go back and forth two or three times. All right, grab number one plastic and we will slide it all the way down make sure the plastic is hitting this roof top edge right there fold this down and you can tell your plastic is, my plastic is right here, which is perfect. So I won't need to trim any more. You want to make sure your plastic is before the seam. So it should be right, right here. If it's not, trim it. All right, I'm going to change my thread to black. The top thread, the bottom thread could be white. And what you're going to do take this to the sewing machine and sew right down that seam. All right, after you sew down the seam, and see, using the black, you can't see it. On this side, I use white in the bobbin. Next, you want to put in number three's plastic. Flip it over. And we're going to place the yard down. And we want to line up the edges and line up the sides here. Pin it, take it to the sewing machine, and sew straight across. Be careful not to get the pink from number five on each side cord in there. After you sew on the yard, go ahead and push down on the material here and we're going to hot glue it or you can choose to sew it. Make sure these sides are tucked in. Now do the same process on number six and the other number five. You need to hand sew the back wall on the outside, do both sides, and go all the way up the roof. Next, grab number two's plastic, the floor, and place it inside. Close the door and see where you will need to trim it. If you trim your plastic, you will have to trim your fleece to match up with the plastic. You want to place number two fabric and face it down. Place the fleece on top, then the plastic, and we're going to hot glue it down. Now let's put it in the house. We'll just place it in there. Do a double check, make sure it closes okay. I'll start with the back glue in it and then the sides. Alright, once you glue your floor in, 
we are going to put our buttons on. What you could do is turn it sideways. Take it and place a pin where you would like your button, just like I did here. You're going to put one on each side. And then we will be placing a button up here. And you could decide where you want that button to be, if you want it tight over here or loose. You don't want to go too tight. I'm going to use a star. button that I have and I'll place that there. I hand sewed on the star button as well as a button on each side. You can come up higher on the elastic than I did. Be careful when choosing your button for the top. If it sticks out too much, your yard will not lay flat. I used this black flat button and it worked out better because it blended better with the roof and the yard laid flat without a wobble. We are just about done. All we have to do is make the pool, grab your backyard cutout pattern, some blue foam, and a piece of blue netting that is 7 by 7 inches. You want to measure 1 inch by 12 inch. And being your foam is 12 inches, you don't need to measure that out. All you have to do is measure an inch out and cut that out. Trace out your pool. And I do want to say I got this blue sparkly foam at Walmart for 97 cents. Now what we're going to do is take the tape off and wrap it around the edging. It's best to leave it flat like this. This way it, it will line up. Okay. Now when you get to the very edge, you're going to have a little bit of excessive. Cut it a little at a time. Right, you want to open it up a little bit and put a little hot glue or you could use tacky glue. Just use a little glue because you don't want it being all over the place. If you do get a little glue try to get it on the inside because you can always cover it up with the netting. Grab our netting. I like to tuck the ends down and just stick it to the wall. That's it. Now let's get it on our floor of our yard. Decide where you want to place your pool. And you could either use hot glue or tacky glue. Peel the backing off and this is not sticky enough to stay on the fabric. Try to get some edges. Congratulations! You are done! Now your little one has a portable dollhouse to take on the go or play with at home. This is perfect for the LOL dolls. It also could be used for Polly Pocket, Barbie Club, Savannah Family, Barbie Mini, just about any doll under 6 inches. If you make this dollhouse, I would love to see it and any changes you make. 
So be sure to tag your creation with Lily Designs One on Instagram, or you can email me your photo to the email down below. This way I can showcase it on my webpage. With Easter around the corner, this will make a fun and creative Easter basket. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my video, be sure to hit the subscribe button along with the bell. This way you'll be notified when my next video comes out. And please share my video on your social media. This way I can continue to offer free patterns. Thank you. Bye-bye.